Hello guys, uh, back for another one. Um, this one we're going to do, this is more of a chat. Seems we've got mackerel season just around the corner. Yeah, it's not far away now and I know you guys love chasing mackerel, most people do. I was just going to do a bit of a chat on how things have changed a little bit over the years and ask in the comments and your your favourite ways to chase mackerel, what you like to do, lures, baits, casting. Um, yeah, just sort of be a, a bit of, of an inter interactive one, see how each other fishes. And this year as well, I'm not going to be fishing in the usual stock standard way for mackerel I ha if I ha as I have over the past years. Um, seems I used to be a pro fisherman for mackerel years ago up north. I don't know why it's taken me this long to think of this, but there was a certain rig we used to use up there. You can swap, it's trawling baits, but your trawl baits a bit quicker. And the way we rig them was really quick and easy, because it needs to be when you're uh, pro mackerel fishing, you need to change baits quick, quick and easy, because you want your baits in the water all the time. You don't want to stand there, muck around putting baits on for a long time or doing awkward hard ways. It's got to be quick and easy. And I've never used a system down here, so I thought this year I'm going to make up those rigs and run them down here and see how we go. If they work, I'll let you know later in the season. And I'll even show you step by step on how to make them and how to bait them up if they work down here. So that'll be something to keep an eye out for. But before we get to that, that's yeah, going to be a few months away. We'll just have a bit of a chat over, like, I've been fishing here for 20 plus years, chasing mackerel and how I've changed over the years and it'd be interesting to see what you guys say and how what you guys do or changed over the years as well. Like back in the early days or my early days up here, Spanish mackerel used to always just go out and troll lures and the main lures were the good old halcos. Still work a treat nowadays. But the two metre diver halcos and we used to troll these along South Strati before it was you know green zone. I used to catch a lot of mackerel doing this and surprisingly quite a few long tails on those. And over the years it's changed, the lures are updated a bit more and more, like nowadays a lot of guys run deeper divers and things like the Nomads. Still work very well, deep divers. Okay, so nowadays it's not, most guys with their trawling, they'll put like a couple of deep divers in the corners, so down deep, and a couple of shallow runners out the back, so you change the water depth and trawl that way. Okay. Um, I see a lot of guys still trawling lures because it's easy for them. You just go out, throw a couple of lures out, drive around. Still works well. I don't do as much lure trawling nowadays. I've changed a bit. But if I do do lures, I still stick out Old Faithful. One of my old favourite lures used to catch so many mackerel. They'd love the CDs. Good old Rapala CDs. That's one of my all time, or well, basically go to lures for mackerel fishing. They work a treat. You can see this one's got teeth marks and chips out of everywhere. Mackerel love this thing. If I'm going back to throw lures out, I'll always throw a CD out and I usually have that one the furthest from the boat. That works an absolute treat. But like I said, over the years, guys are doing a lot of things different. Like nowadays, a lot of people are trawling with downriggers. Downriggers come in a few years ago. Oh, for most people, they've been around for a long, long time. But just over the last past few years, they've really taken off here. And people are trawling like dead baits and live baits on rigs like this. Okay, the old single hook through the nose, treble on a tail, and put that on a downrigger, say 10 metres off the bottom, and slow troll around the reefs, especially 24s, gravel patch, that sort of area. Okay, that's taken off, and also with these rigs, you can run them without the downrigger, just behind the boat, with a live on it, they'll swim just under the surface. Good way to chase mackerel really early in the morning. And as the sun gets up higher, uh, we generally put our baits down deeper. Okay, so that's that's the latest craze, and I, I'm not, it's what most people are doing. And I'm going to guess this year I'll go out there and be people down really just trawling the same way, doing the same thing. So it does work. Uh, the other way, okay. Another thing that's fairly new, it's been around for a few years, but like a lot of guys, it's more and more people doing it down here, is like stick baits and stuff. Okay, sinking and floating for mackerel, especially Spaniards out the 24s. If you find them up high or find base schools, okay, try some stick baits. Well, that's an old pencil pop, that's one of the old faithful lures. Haven't used it on mackerel, but down south and stuff for kingfish and shit, they work really well. Um, 
And then you've got like the old sink and stick baits, which are probably the main ones for mackerel up here. So some guys, you can let them sink down and bring them back through the water column, through the bait schools. They work really well. It'd be interesting to see if any of you guys in the comments actually use stick baits down here and how well you go. And probably one of the latest craze is good old slow pitch sticking. Don't count this out. This works extremely well for mackerel, slow pitch jigging, okay? Mackerel respond well to jigs, very well to jigs around bait schools. These things do work well. And the only catch is, you need to like these wire hooks. Like I've done a video on how to make alternate hooks. This, this is wire, okay? I'll put heat shrink over it just to cover the wire up. But they're wire, and I've done that for mackerel. Slow pitching for mackerel. And if you are going for mackerel, we're gonna use these. Run a short bite trace, like a single strand, 40, say 40 or 60 pound, just short, like six inches, just a bite trace off the end. Okay, so the mackerel don't bite through, because they will swallow these like Tic Tacs. Just a short bite trace, okay guys? So you don't lose all your lures with a, with a wire under hook. That's awesome. I've never actually, I think I've hooked mackerel and been bitten off on slow pitch jigs, but something I haven't really tried. This year I'd like to try it a bit more. Okay, and the other thing, I'm gonna say I'm just I'm only doing this just to refresh you guys' mind, uh, memories. There's so many different ways to chase mackerel, and I know some some of the kayaks that they got a special little rig they draw pillies on. They do extremely well. I just can't think of how that rig's made at the moment. I haven't made one in a long time, so sorry about that. But we'll get back to this. The other the other thing to do, and it's a big hit here is chasing spotties when they start around, say, late November, early December. You should hopefully see a few spotties starting to show up. And then you've got the guys sitting down, palmy, a mermaid, okay, even the bait reefs off the seaway. Just with like a 27 pound wire, a 4 a hook, and they're flat lining with these. So basically half a pilchard, throw it over the back of the boat, and let it waft down through your burly trail, because the guys are burling chunks of pilchards at the same time, trying to bring the spotties in with just a small light rig like that, okay? That works extremely well. That's a favorite with a lot of people because the spotties are fun to catch on light line and taste good. And while you're float lining for that, or even if you're not float lining for spotties, you can go around with all the guys barely and just cast slugs, these things. Once again, let them sink down and bring them back up through the water column. And when a heap of boats are there all barely in, look where the wind is, look where the, where the current's going and go cast these slugs in, well, down current of all the boats or all the burley, and go sit in the big massive burley trail that's been put out there and cast a few slugs. Good way to find the spotties, okay? Good way to find a few spotties. So we've got lures, trolling live baits, trolling dead baits, down riggers, just behind the boat, casting slugs, stick baits, there's so many different ways to chase mackerel. It'd be interesting, guys, to see how you do it. I'd like to hear about how you guys do it and how well you do each year, and do you change it all? Do you change rigs, do you change methods? Um, we'll get back to the baits now. Um, this has probably been around for a long, long time. Troll on a dead bait. Look at this thing. So these things you can make up with different size hooks to run garfish, run bonito, run tailor, run pilchards, just change the hook sizes. Put one or two sinkers on, you know, as a kill. Sometimes they're a bit light. Uh, old nose cone to spike. That's, this one's probably one of the oldest ones, been around forever. A lot of people use it just to slow troll dead baits. And it does work really well for Spanish mackerel. And if you use a smaller version of this with pilchards and troll around in close, it works really well for spotties. Okay, so that's an old faithful. This is a good old rig. But this is not the prey fishing rig for up north because this takes a little bit of mucking around to get your bait straight and worked and swimming properly. The prey rig I'm talking about earlier, it's very, very quick. You've got to put the baits on quickly because you know, I want to get into the fish and catch as many fish as possible. This is not it. This is a good rig, but it takes a little bit of mucking around to get your bait swimming properly. Okay. Now, I haven't tried this one yet, so I actually made up a, my own personal skirt with a 3D printer and like that holographic stuff over the top, over the baits. I'm gonna try that this year and see how that goes. That looks good, doesn't it? Don't know how it's gonna swim, but it looks good. I'll let you guys know how that one works. See that in the water swimming around with a dead bait out. I reckon that'd be an absolute cracker. And the last thing we'll talk about now 
there's not a lot of guys used down here, and you should, because they work really well. Up north, they're deadly, and down here they do work well as well. But a lot of guys don't do it, is good old fashioned wog heads, okay? These things work an absolute treat. Not a lot of guys do it. There's a few different ways you can actually rig these up. I've got this rigged up with a few big hooks. This is gonna be for a big bait, okay? I won't be using this rig probably down here. This is, it's just a bit of a large size. This is more when I'm trawling big baits up north on heavy 15, 24 tackle, kilo tackle for up north. But I will, cross, I will run some wog heads. I had before in the past, years ago. I haven't done it for a long time, but this year I plan on running a few more wog heads. They do work well. Just with a smaller version of the hooks of that, so I would downgrade the hooks on that one. Yeah, and probably swim some, I don't know, sourries or something in it. Okay. But don't count out the wog heads, guys. If you haven't tried wog heads, go online, look at different ways to rig these up, rig these up and run them. These are really good for mackerel. Really, really good. Okay. There's a reason a lot of pro fishermen down here and all around Australia Australian stuff use wog heads, because they work. Okay. And when you do these, don't forget, that's the way you rig them. Okay, so I see a lot of guys, they rig these things on backwards. You can see they look like so. People think that's the top. It's not. So when you rig them, don't rig them backwards. You want that coming back over the top of the bait like an umbrella like so. Okay. So try wog heads. Is that something you haven't tried before? Have a look how to rig them. They're a good option. Uh, and once again, this season coming up, I'm looking forward to it because I want to tr try some different things. Like I went from old school, from lures to you know casting baits to trolling dead baits, live baits. I want to try jigging this year more, give that more of a crack. That'd be interesting around bait schools. I'm going to try my pro fishing rig from up north. I'm going to make that up and run it and see if it works. If it does work, I will let you guys know how it works and how to make it and how to run it later in the season. Um, stick baits is also a good option. I'm not going to be really that concerned about using them down here, but some guys do like it and it does work really well. So it's something to keep it, you know, something to think about anyway. And it'd be interesting, guys, just once again, in the comments, it'd be interesting to see what you guys do, how you chase mackerel, what lures you like to use. Let's have a little bit of a discussion on who's going to do what in this coming season. It should be interesting. Anyway, guys, thanks for that one. Um, I'll see you again next week for the next video. And don't worry, shortly uh, we'll, we'll be starting to do quite a lot of fishing videos. So we're going to be moving out of the shed a bit more and starting to do some more fishing videos, quite a few fishing videos. And as we're as I'm fishing, don't worry, I'll be if well if when we're out and we have successful trips. I will, go, will show you guys the gear I'm using and the rigs and everything else, so I won't be hiding anything. Um, so hopefully you look forward to those ones. Anyway guys, we'll see you uh, next week for the next one. Thanks, bye.